So do you know uh, what we generally call this sort of clock? Yes, it's called an Act of Parliament clock. Well, you're sort of right. It's a bit of a misnomer, really. It's actually a tavern clock. Oh. Do you know why they became known as Act of Parliament clocks? I think it had something to do with a tax on clocks that was introduced in about the 1830s. No, a lot oh, earlier than that. Again. <laughs> William Pitt was the Prime Minister at the time, and he, in 1797, introduced a tax on all clocks and watches. Cheapest was um, two shillings and sixpence, which is 12 and a half p in new money, oh. running up to 10 shillings, 50 pence, um, for good gold watches, and any clock over a pound was taxed at five shillings. Good. In other words, 25p in today's money. And um, it sounded a good idea to raise money, but what happened was that the general public immediately stopped buying clocks and watches, and a lot of clockmakers and the suppliers to clockmakers rapidly went out of business. So within nine months, luckily, the act was repealed. Right. And as a result, from really from 1797, they've become known as Act of Parliament clocks. Ah, oh, I see. And the clever people, you see, would have put these in somewhere like a pub, so people had to go in, pay for a pint in order to tell the time. Right. <laughs> um, have you known it that long? Well, not you personally, but the family, for instance. <laughs> as far as I know, it's been in the house uh, forever, and the house was finished in 1813, so. I, I imagine it must have been dating from about that time. No, it's well before that. Is that right? Yes. It's going to be, this particular one, I think, is going to be from about 1770s, 1780s. Goodness. But it has had, as we were jokingly say, a very hard-working life. Has it been involved in a fire or anything like that? Actually, it was, probably. It would have come through the fire in 1970. There was a devastating fire in the house, and it would have um, endured that. And that possibly explains its, um, well, partially explains its, its rather decrepit condition. Well, I have to say it has suffered uh, really rather badly. The trunk door of all these things would have been beautifully lacquered, and you can just see the outline of this Far yes. Eastern scene and a little figure here that would have been yes. built up with all sorts of layers of lacquer and lovely gilt work. And here, in what is now this sort of empty bit, there would have oh. been, again, in, in gilt, a maker's name. Right. And it would have looked absolutely superb. Oh, sure. Do you always remember it with this particular dial? Yes. Because the more I look at it, it is so obviously wrong. This is a bit of tin oh. that has just been literally tapped in place oh, on top of the original dial. Now, there's oh. every possibility that if we were allowed to take this off, we will see the black paint underneath with, again, what originally would have been gilt numerals. Gosh, that'd be fascinating. Would you be happy if uh, myself and, and one of the assistants took the dial off? Yes, I would. I'd be most intrigued. I'd love to see what's underneath there. Okay, And then we it. can see more history about it. Absolutely. So we've now taken out all those pins that were around the dial, taken out the pin from the hand collet, so I'm going to ask you very kindly to hold the hands. Right. Thank you. Now, you've never seen behind here No, before, have I haven't. You? I'm intrigued. And I said that I hoped we might have seen a black dial with gilt numerals. Mm. So let's have a little look. Take off this tin plate. Oh, my God. Exactly as predicted. Look at that. Well, it's not black and it's not gilt, but this is absolutely the original finish. Oh, gosh, how amazing. When was this fire you mentioned? 1970. It, undoubtedly, that's when that damage would have happened. Well, this is quite unbelievable because somebody's just got a black paintbrush, yes. gone round here and thought, well, rather than repaint this dial, we'll just paint up a bit of tin plate instead. Yes. I'm just hoping we might also see a rather nice look at that. Original pendulum bob, lovely original oval sectioned brass cased weight. Yes. It's great. It's lovely. This is what I would love to have seen. So the condition sadly is what they call distressed is it mm, not unfortunately yes it's a very difficult one to price when something is this far gone mm -hmm. it can all be restored it's going to be a lot of money to do so oh yes let's work it backwards and and think the price of what it would be worth retail in lovely condition that's torturous 
I, well, I'm going to quote you about £15,000. Right. The cost of restoration to the movement is going to be about 450. That's the least of your problems. The casework could well be, by the time this has all been beautifully lacquered, a good five thousand pounds. Right. So, in its current condition, if it appeared at auction in this state, I think it's going to fetch around three to four thousand pounds. Oh, well, good in a way. It can stay at home. <laughs> oh, you've got to keep it. It's a great piece. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Well, it's been an absolute joy to reveal what it should have looked like two hundred odd years ago. Yes, and very interesting for me too. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thanks.